Hi again! I'm here to show you a really, really quick and fun tutorial today. Um, I was going to do this out in the garden, but the children are kind of loud, so we've brought it inside. What I'm going to show you today is how to make these really cute, adorable pinwheels. Now you can see that one does, one does not move, and one does. Um, this one here will move, as you can see, hopefully. Uh, in there you can get them to move. I had the longest time trying to figure out how to do this so now that I figured it out I will show you. Um, this one here all I did is I put it on the back of a straw with one of our uh, rhinestone brads and it doesn't move. This you could kind of stick in a flower pot on a birthday cake um, you know as a, a fun little favor just as decoration. This one I would actually use. I would put it in the garden or give it to one of the kids to play with outside or you know that kind of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you how to make this one. So what I've done is I started with a 5x5 five five piece of designer series paper. Make sure I do. Yes, 5x5. Five by five. Um, and what you want to do is you want to place it in your paper cutter and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to line the points up with the cutting alley, that's what I'm going to call it, so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm measuring it up just where it's going to cut and I'm going to slice it stopping just before the middle and continuing down. So as you can see here, I've cut it almost to the middle and then almost to the middle again. And I'm going to just turn it around and do the same thing. And no, I'm not going to answer the phone. We all know what happened last time. Alright, so now I've got these four triangles that are joined together in the center. You can see that. So now what I want to do is I want to flip them over and give them that pinwheel appearance. So I'm going to use um, the foam mat from the Stampin' Up! Crafters Toolkit as well um, as my finger. That's all. And maybe a little bit of adhesive. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually not going to use this. That was for something different. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of glue on every opposite point. So you can see I'm going to put some here. I'm going to put some here. I'm going to put some here and I'm going to put some here. So we have adhesive, 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 adhesive. So you can see it's every opposite. So then all I'm going to do is I'm going to turn them into center. Now I'm going to have them overlap quite a bit and you're going to see why in a second. Because I actually want to punch a fairly large hole through all of these um, uh, to uh, set that jumbo eyelet so we can have it spin. So you can kind of see what I'm doing here. This is kind of one of those hard things to show. Ah, there we go. So you can see how I'm kind of flipping them and holding them over each other. And the last one. Now, if I was not going to be setting an eyelid in the center here, which I'm going to, I would have used this foam and my paper piercer to hold it all together and then stuck a brad through. And that's what I did with this one that I just have on the straw. Um, so you can see I just stuck it right through. You could also use one of those little pixie sticks or something uh, with these, but that's so it's not going to move. And so I would have just kind of stuck a pinch, um, paper piercer through here and the brad and been done with it. But I'm going to be a little more difficult here. So now I've kind of got these all together. I'm going to bring out my big mat and I have to say, you know, since I got my crocodile, I have not set a bunch of, of a number of eyelets this way, but um, bear with me here with this noise. So I'm going to take my large jumbo um, punch and I'm going to punch through all the layers of this. Sorry guys, I know that's really loud. Okay. And you want to make sure that they do not come apart. Alright. And you want to also make sure that you get through all the layers, which I have not done here. See, I must make mistakes too. Okay, there we go. So let's do it one more time. Sorry, I just hate the noise here. Okay, so now it's all the way through. So I'm going to just take one of my jumbo eyelets and I'm going to just stick that baby right in the center. So you can see that the eyelet is right inside. Now I'm just going to flip it over and I'm just going to set it using the large eyelet set. Wow, that's my cell phone ringing. Somebody's really trying to get a hold of me. Alright, so we're just going to set that, give it a little schmack for good measure. So we now have our pinwheel all put together. You may have to kind of fluff these babies up just a little bit because they were just squished. Oops, and one of them didn't get through. But that's okay, we'll fix it. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take one of the rhinestone brads, and I'm using these because they have a really long stem to them. 
As you can see, it's, it's got a fairly long, I'll just do it this way, a fairly long stem to, I don't even know where my hand is, stem to them. Um, and so then we'll be able to put this through and uh, it'll be able to spin. Now, what do I use on the back, you ask? Well, um, there's a number of different things you could do. It's really unfortunate that this didn't uh, work for me, but you know what, that's okay. Life happens. There we go, slide it right under. Um, you could use a straw, as I said before, with the one that I didn't have moving, um, but you have to kind of put a washer in between to get it to move. You could use a chopstick. Again, you could take your crocodile and punch a hole in, a, in the chopstick, but you need to use a washer in between um, to give it that movement. So what I decided to do is I'm taking my little rhinestone bread and I'm using a pencil. Now when I was young, what we done, what we would have done now is taken actually like a stick pin and put it through and poked it into the pencil. But I don't want to use a pin as I might give this to one of my children and I don't want them to have a pin. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paper piercer and I'm going to start by piercing a small hole. Well, this is a yucky pencil. It just broke. Good thing I brought another one. So we're going to poke a hole in our eraser with our paper piercer. Then we will take our brad and stick it in the hole. And keep going, keep going, keep going. Whoopsie. And now you have a pinwheel. That will move. So give them a try. They're a quick and fun and easy project to do. You can make them from any size of cardstock. You just need to make sure that it's a complete square. So in this case today, I used a five by five square, um, but I have used a four by four square in the past and it works really, really well also. So there's a couple of different ways you can do your pinwheels. Here, let's hold them so you can actually see them. Sorry, I have a bit of a gimp today on the uh, tutorial, but You can see that that uh, works really well.